So even if you paint in color, contrast is a great tool to uh, use in composition. It's a great way to tell the viewer how you want them to view your painting. And, um, and it's really simple and, and easy to use. And a great example is, uh, is if you look off into the horizon, if you go out into nature or down to the beach and you, um, and you look out to the horizon or you look off into the distance, into the distance hills or, or wherever you are, uh, if you look really closely, you'll notice that the darks and the lights way off in the distance aren't as impactful as they are up close. Um, your brain doesn't really tell you that at first. Your brain perceives them as just as contrasted. It, it, it tricks you a little bit, which we'll talk about um, in, in a few minutes. Um, but it's a great way to, to draw attention in your, uh, in your works. And I'll try and give you an example. So if you're, if you're painting the the foreground, whether that's hills or mountains, uh, and the background trees. You've got a forest behind, and the background trees are of a similar tone. Then, um, then your image is going to look flat. Um, but if you, if you, if you make the forest lighter. and then you put the hills in front, you're gonna draw depth into your work and you're gonna create depth in a very simple and easy way. So wherever you want the eye to lead, create a strong contrast between light and dark and wherever you don't want the eye to lead or you want the eye to fall on second or third, um, then you create less contrast between light and dark and it really is that simple and um, we'll paint a little bit of this urchin and I'll uh, and I'll kind of show you what I mean in the real world so here we are we're going to paint this uh, this bump on the urchin here um, I've got my reference here and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the reference here to uh, paint this urchin and I'll probably just speed through the process a little bit and uh, then talk about it afterwards. Okay, so I've developed this, uh, this bump here and just as I'm about to do the final layer, uh, I wanted to do a check on uh, the contrast and what we were discussing and um, if I can just bring this down a little bit so this is my reference I hope this will show up okay on the camera um, you can see that there's highlights in there you can see that there's dark points and you can see that there's there's nuance in in the tone um, but the problem that we've got is because I've zoomed in so much it looks just like in the distant hills it looks like this is quite a contrast. It looks like that's quite bright and it looks like these are quite dark. But when you zoom out, it's this bump here. And you realize that it's not very bright at all. Um, and so because I've been focusing on just this bump, I haven't focused on the relative contrast and so I think what's going to happen is as I zoom out, uh, what's going to happen is, is that this bump is going to stand out way more than I want it to. So here you can easily see that I've got this beautiful bright section over here with this light falling across the side of the urchin. And as we start to come into the light fading around the side, shadows start to come in the highlights start to decrease and the highlights start to just dull and they're, they're not so contrast and you really get that feel of the light falling across and then we come to this bump here which is way too bright and it just dissolves the whole illusion of, of reality and so the, the tone 
of your highlights against your darks are so essential. And I don't want to draw focus here. This is my main focus point. This is where I want people to be looking. This is the supporting act of the main front of the urchin. And um, not only has it, has it altered the illusion of solid form, it's also drawing the eye um, because I've got too much contrast here. And so this is one of my uh, favorite tools uh, in my own discovery of this process years ago. Um, uh, I think it's called a shadow illusion. It looks like it's got Edward Adelson on there. Um, you can Google this image uh, yourself. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so it's a chess style board with a green cylinder on it. The light is coming from the right hand side and the cylinder is causing a shadow. Um, and you've got squares A and squares B are marked. Square A is a dark square, square B is a light square. And what's fascinating about this is, I'm sure that you can guess, is that it's an optical illusion. Um, and what you realize is that squares A and B are exactly the same tone. But because of their relative contrast, because A is surrounded by lighter squares and because B is surrounded by darker squares, B looks lighter, A looks darker. And that is how easily your brain can get tricked when it's looking at contrast. And so you can imagine just how easily you could paint this incorrectly if you were to paint B as it looked and A as it looked you would create way more contrast within your work than was needed and that would dissolve the illusion of form and it would break down the perception of reality and it's just going to make your work look flat and lifeless. And I think we can probably easily counteract that here before I get into the detail section of taking a duller or a more dull highlight tone down those highlights and then we're also going to do the same with the darks just get a slightly lighter dark tone this still is in the shadowy section so we still do want to show shadow but we just want to reduce the contrast between those tones and sometimes you can add a buffer between the highlight and the dark. So here I've got the three tones, I've got the light to the medium to the dark, and that is a whole lot different than just going light to dark. And so you've still created the shadow that you need and the highlights that you need, but you've just softened it. And I think that will um, be much more in keeping with where we want this urchin, uh, where, where we want this bump to be within this urchin. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed that video please head over to my website it's chrissummer.com.au or you can just google Chris Summer and sign up to my newsletter where there's a whole heap of information about my practice and any upcoming exhibitions.